<laughs> Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Takia, and then I think everyone knows Peter. So uh, let me start this session by introducing quickly about uh, what we do, and then myself. Uh, I, I, we've been talking in the backstage for quite a long, and then I want to get back to the topic as soon as possible. So I'm going to keep this uh, presentation very short. So uh, about Quipa, Quipa was founded in December 2010 in the UK. We currently have six offices in London, Tokyo, Manila, Mexico City, Jakarta, and then Ho Chi Minh City. We have about uh, 600 employees all around the world. And as, uh, as introduced, we've been acquired by Recruit in April 2015. Uh, we are an education company, and our corporate motto is distributors of wisdom. <coughs> Very quickly about myself. I'm a Todai dropout. I dropped, uh, dropped out of uh, University of Tokyo in 2008 and then graduated from University College London in the, in the UK. I joined Quip as a founding member and then I've been in charge since of everything, business dev marketing, product management, and then everything in six countries. And uh, now leading Indonesia's countries, uh, sorry, Quip by Indonesia's country manager and leading a team of over 500 uh, members. Let me quickly introduce about study Sapri and then Quipa. So study Sapri and then Quipa are pretty much the same thing, uh, different brand in different countries. In Japan, we call it study Sapri, and then in other countries, Indonesia, Philippines, Mexico, Vietnam, we call it Quipa. It's a personalized learning a tool for students, and also we are providing uh, materials for teachers as well, for efficient teaching, and much more. Uh, in Japan and then in other countries combined, we have uh, over 500,000 uh, paying customers, paying learners, and then uh, including free services, we have about 6 million learners and used in thousands of schools worldwide. So uh, I think we can talk about this later in the, in the session, in the dialogue with Peter, so I'm going to skip this. We are providing uh, services not only to students, but also to teachers. And more about Study Sapri, we are currently running a new speak series on Education Frontier, sponsored by Study Sapri. So if you're interested, please find it, uh, find it out. Uh, it's very interesting, and then I, I think it's uh, worth the read. About Quipa Indonesia, uh, we have about 2.5 million registered students, 200,000 registered teachers. Uh, number of schools with Quipa users is over 10,000. And uh, 300 million questions have been answered so far. So basically, we are the biggest education, uh, online education company in Indonesia. We started our operation in Indonesia in 2015, so within two years uh, of operation, we have become the number one player in the, in the country. So these are the happy students and teachers. Uh, yesterday, sorry, two days ago, we had a study SAPRI graduation ceremony uh, for those students who've been using study SAPRI and then uh, passed the university entrance exams. So you can see some happy pic you know, pictures of students uh, taken with the, the teachers. And also from Indonesia as well. We have a lot of students using and then being happy uh, about our service. So this is the very quick introduction of us. And then this is the roadmap for uh, our future. And then this is something that I want to discuss with Peter in this session. So we believe that education is a very broad term. And then in our uh, term, education can be divided into three phases. The first fa phase is access. We want to bring access to basic education to billions of, uh, billions of students who don't have it at the moment. So what we mean by this is we want to expand our countries. We want to expand our content. We are currently providing our content to high school students and then junior high school students. We want to expand to primary schools and then university students. So this is what we mean by access. And the next step, next phase is efficiency. Currently, education is not as efficient as it should be. Uh, there are so many students and teachers struggling to provide good education efficiently. So this is something that we want to provide uh, with our services in the, in the next phase. We already do something uh, now. For example, we are making a learning adaptive experience for students. And also, we are providing a lot of online coaching services so that students can uh, be guided by the teachers to provide uh, uh, highest quality education. And also, career education is very, very important. So this is something that we want to provide. And next step is the future. So 21st century is very complicated. It's super complex. And then we want to uh, equip students, prepare students to be ready for this uh, very complicated era. And this is something that I want to discuss and then get Peter's thoughts. Uh, because he's from Finland, and Finland is very famous for having a very uh, super future-oriented education. So I think uh, this is pretty much the end of uh, my 
very quick presentation, and then we can move back to the, uh, the dialogue with Peter. So thank you very much. Yeah. So Peter, um, if you could explain about what you do uh, as an education uh, company, I think you're already doing education. So <laughs> please, can you explain to us? Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, uh, when I decided to leave the day-to-day -day, kind of like operations at Rovia, I said that it's uh, after Angry Birds, I want to focus on some uh, bigger things. And uh, of course, uh, bigger things being education. So if you look at uh, the world today, uh, I, I think that uh, pretty much everybody agrees uh, that education is super important. And, and it's kind of like one of these things that all of us entrepreneurs want to you know, change the world and we want to change it for the better. And uh, I think the best thing, way to do that is through education. And then uh, kind of like the business opportunity, if you look at education, it's uh, the second biggest uh, market after food. It's 6.3 trillion, so like with a T, not billions, but trillions. And uh, what I want to do is I want to reduce the market size globally to 3 trillion. And then over the next 10 years, uh, with some of the companies that I'm now working with, uh, some of the new startups like Lightyear, which is this one, Fun Academy, a bunch of others, want to capture 10% of the global market, which means 300 billion, again with a B. So it's like a pretty big uh, business opportunity. So uh, making the world a better place and then making a bit of money, so you know, doesn't get much better than that. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned Finland. So um, uh, we're only 5 million people, but we've given the world things like Linux, MySQL, uh, Angry Birds, Nokia, Supercell, and Slush, obviously. So uh, it's pretty good for like only five million people. And I think that one of the reasons for that is that we really have fantastic education. We educate all five million to a very high level. And uh, the way we do it is very different from like the Asian model. And uh, by that, I mean that we have, uh, I mean, I have two kids. They go to school maybe nine or 10 in the morning. They get home, you know, one or two in the afternoon. So we have very short school days not a lot of homework. So after school, my kids go out, they play you know, soccer or you know, they go play with their friends and they don't have uh, you know, like super long school days and we still deliver fantastic results. So short school days, not a lot of homework and we still deliver the same or better results. And I think that uh, that's what we want to bring to the world. So we want to make learning fun. We want to make learning engaging and when you do learning and you do education properly, it means that school doesn't kill creativity, school doesn't kill initiative. So when you graduate from school and the government tells you that please do a startup, you actually know what to do. And uh, that, that's something that I think is very important. And uh, Can I ask a question? Yeah. So basically you are teaching for only four hours, five hours a day. In Japan yeah. or in Asia countries, people study for like 10 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we How have, I think, on average, like six hours uh, through the whole like uh, basic uh, education. So, super short school days. We have actually like and super short lessons, 45 minutes, and then you have a 15-minute break. You go out and play rain or shine. So uh, it's a healthy balance, and I think that that's why we also deliver some fantastic startups because uh, again, it's built on a foundation of fantastic education. So when people then graduate from school, they go and uh, they do a startup or they start something like Slush. But how and how, that's can, why, you, how yeah. can you achieve the same level of academic excellence by studying for a short period of time? Everybody who's gone to school, you know, here or, uh, you know, uh, anywhere where you have long school days, you all know that it's not very efficient. I and mean, if you do something for like eight hours straight, no breaks, it's not very efficient. You should take breaks, you should play games, you should go and play with your, game, uh, with your uh, friends. And I think that, uh, again, uh, it's not about how long you stay at school or how long you stay at work. It's about what you deliver. Longer school days, longer work days are no guarantee for you know, results. You know, if you work, 12 hours a day doing the wrong things, it's still the wrong things. Right. You know, so it, you don't deliver anything of value. So, so I think that uh, it's the same uh, in Finland that, I mean, if, if you can't learn anymore after, you know, spending six hours at school, why stay another three hours learning nothing? So uh, 
I think that uh, it's just about uh, how human beings are that uh, there is kind of like uh, a limit to everything and uh, and you learn best if you have a healthy balance, I think. Right. And we've been talking a little bit about the teacher competence. So do you see any differences between the way that we teach in Asia and then you launch your product in Singapore and then you're trying to uh, go to other Asian yep. countries? So what's the biggest difference for teachers? Uh, I, I think that... Uh, no, I mean, you also talked like you had in your last slide about like 21st century and 21st, 21st century skills. I think that's actually spot on what we're looking at now in like in the world today. I mean, the education system, uh, you know, uh, hasn't really evolved. And, and uh, what has happened is that we've created a system where we mass produce talent. And I wouldn't even call it talent. It's just like we uh, use a lot of road learning to learn, you know, like standard skills that were fine if you went to work at a big corporation doing standard things, creating standard products. But today, of course, we live in a world where standard products and standard, you know, like ways of doing things don't cut it. You have to do things differently. And, and I think that education also has to kind of like evolve along those lines. So uh, I really believe that uh, uh, the, kind of like the educational system that we created in Finland is also the way forward for kind of like the rest of the world. And uh, that's also, uh, it would be unfair uh, for us not to share it with the rest of the world. So I think that's something that uh, it's very much in Finnish like uh, culture that, uh, you know, open source and, you know, sharing. Uh, that's why, you know, Linux and MySQL uh, originated in Finland because the whole culture is about sharing and we also apply that in education. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's very much needed uh, everywhere. One thing on, on like um, what we did last week in Singapore, we launched uh, uh, a new game by Lightyear. So this is actually Neon from the game, one of the characters. But it's, it's very interesting. We went to schools in Singapore and then we told the kids, or we actually asked that, okay, how many of you love playing games? And then all the hands went up. Everybody loves playing games. And then we said, hey, now you're going to be allowed to play games, you know, in class. And it's actually very good for you to play more games. And then the teachers were like, oh, what have we done now? We have let the, these crazy Finnish people come into class and destroy our youth. You know, they're telling them to play games. Every parent knows that it's bad. Okay, and then we let the kids play the game for 15 minutes. So it's this new game called Big Bang Legends. And they play the game for 50 minutes. And then we ask the kids, and these are typically 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds. Then we ask them that, okay, so you now had a 15-minute game session. But actually what you did, you had a lesson in particle physics. Then we ask the 10-year-old kids, how many quarks in a proton? So how many people here actually know how many quarks in a proton? Anybody? Okay, all the kids after 15 minutes of playing the game raise their hand and say, three quarks in a proton. All of them know, 10-year-olds. Then we ask them, okay, how many atoms did you collect in the game? Four, five? Okay, you collected four, can you name them? And they go, yes, hydrogen, helium, lithium, and so on. So they learn in 15 minutes particle physics, you know, the beginnings of particle physics. And then the teachers look at us and say, what just happened? The kids have never learned so much so fast. And they were having fun. They were playing a game and they learn. And then we say, exactly. You can learn and you can actually learn much faster, much better when you're having fun. So what we're doing at Lightyear, we're going to make all learning fun. We start with particle physics, then we'll do quantum physics. So we'll teach five-year-olds quantum physics. We're working with CERN best, you know, like scientists on the planet. We obviously have the best game designers on the planet. We have the best pedagogues on the planet. So we're actually going to uh, move on from particle physics, quantum physics, chemistry, biology, geography. You're going to learn all of this by playing games. Right, I think that's something that we can definitely collaborate. So we've yeah. been talking in the backstage that we're going to bring Finnish education to uh, our country. So in terms of the, uh, the reach, I think we've has been reaching out to you know, tens of thousands of schools. Yeah, uh, we're going to reach uh, billions of people. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the Angry yeah, Bird yeah. scale that we learned to do. So uh, we, we're not looking at reaching a few, like 100,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. or million, but it has to be like billions. 
And, and I think that, uh, of course, everybody on the planet deserves fantastic education. And we're not trying to replace teachers or schools, but we are working with the teachers. We're producing teacher manuals. We're training teachers. So we're working together to educate the planet. So it's not about either or. But I think that what's really cool yeah. is that because now everybody has one of these, you know, you have a smartphone or a tablet, learning is totally out of control. We were telling the teachers that, guess what, now the kids are going to start learning particle physics yeah. on the bus ride on their way home in their house. You know, learning has escaped the classroom. And of course, it should never have been like contained to that. But learning is now like totally out of control. Kids will know more than their teachers, which again will force a change. The teachers will need to become coaches. They can't yeah. be this know-all, you know, like expert in everything. And I think that's also very positive that uh, yeah, exactly, teachers yeah. are human yeah. beings yeah. too. Yeah, we believe too. Um, the teachers not always have to. They don't have to teach. They have. Yeah. To, they can be the coach, or they can yes. be the. Uh, the moderator, they can be the facilitator of yeah. the, the session. So I think the, the roles for teachers are going to change very dramatically in the next, you know, probably yeah. like five years or so, exactly. or even exactly. quickly, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, we have we share the same visions, and then hopefully, you know, we can work together in Absolutely. a lot of countries. But but I think that this is also, I mean, Slush is also a fantastic event. I mean, you learn so much here. And if you look at now, this is the third year of Slush Tokyo. Ask any of the fantastic volunteers here if they learn more at slush or at school. <laughs> and I bet you that most of them have learned more, you know, working on slush, you know, learning things that, hey, of course, you can build the best event in Japan, even if you're a young person without gray hair. It's okay. You know, young people can do stuff too. And I think that this is very important learning. And I think that, uh, Exactly like we see here, we have people from Japan, from China, from Finland, from all over Europe, from all over Asia working together. Mm -hmm. And I think that also in education, I mean, we definitely want to work together. And we discussed backstage already that, hey, let's work together and bring fantastic education from Japan and Finland to Indonesia, to the Philippines, China, everywhere. So, uh, so I think that exactly like we're doing it at Slush, we'll do this together as well. And, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be like amazing yeah, when yeah, you yeah. get there. Yeah, it's a fantastic platform for people yeah. to learn things real in real life. Yeah, and you build fantastic reach now in Indonesia. So of course, by working together, we can reach you know the billions. The billions, yeah, definitely billions, not millions, billions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With cool. a B. Yeah, with a B. All right, I think we are running out of time now. Yeah, I think we're running out of time. <laughs> so the countdown here, but. I think we're actually going to be, uh, are we going to yeah, the, we're, we're gonna like be in the uh, slush, slush cafe, cafe as well? So, this, uh, so yeah. if you And we're in overtime. <laughs> now it's like sudden death goal. Those who <laughs> play like ice hockey know that now the next goal will like decide the game. <laughs> but anyway, I think that we'll probably like stop here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. But hey, so uh, come over to the slush cafe and we can like continue the dialogue there. But uh, yeah, we're going to deliver fantastic education to the planet. So we agreed to do that together. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.